Welcome back. Today I want to talk about a wonderful phrase which has become near and dear to my heart, an essential part of what I teach, how I teach meditation, and that is soak. We are going to soak like we have become the holy potato. <laughs> what does that mean? So let's get into it. So this has become an essential part of my teaching. I just adore this visual of becoming the holy potato, just soaking everything in, which is wonderful, into our beings. So what does that really mean? Well, first of all, it means to enjoy. So we're gonna do some doing. We're gonna do some work of the Raja Yoga this mental and psychophysiological yoga. We want to do the long breathing of HRV resonance. We want to sit very still as we do that so that we can invite the freeze response to show itself. We want to notice that the four proofs of the parasympathetic system are showing up inside of us. And maybe we want to do some Om Japa in the chakras, right? That's, these are the essential points that I keep coming back to over and over and over again, right? So this is the doing. And so maybe we do that for 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 minutes. And then we really need to enter into this next phase of just be. Just be. And we don't quite always know what that means. How do I let go? How do I just be? What do you mean just <laughs> enjoy? Well, first of all, did you notice any of the four proofs? Well, yeah, Forrest, I've got the hands hot and heavy. I did notice that. Okay, so I'm sitting in meditation. I'm sitting very still. I noticed that my hands are warming up. Some people say, well, I can feel that they're swollen. Is that it? Yes. That is the blood pooling in your hands. And that's what warms them up. The arteries have dilated because you're so wonderfully relaxed in the parasympathetic. You've gotten out of stress. You've actually gotten out of the sympathetic system. And so your hands warm up with this pooling blood. And that's the first thing you might notice in your hands. And you might notice that Go up your arms, into your chest, and into the rest of your body even. And all of that is a little bit blissful. And it might not be hugely blissful at first. That's okay, but it's slightly blissful. Can you enjoy that slightly blissful? So just HHH, that's all I've got. And I'm just feeling it. And it's, yeah, it's kind of nice. You're sitting. You're sitting and you're soaking in your parasympathetic. Can you sit in that and enjoy it? This feeling is the pot and I am soaking it in. I am the holy potato in the pot of the parasympathetic system and I am soaking it into myself. Are your lips tingling? Is there a pressure on the dorsal vagal? Is the skin tingling? Any of those proofs are very slightly blissful. You see, Whatever we give attention to in our lives is bound to grow. It is bound to grow. And you can see this. What you put your mind on, it's going to grow. And so when you put your mind on these very good qualities, you're growing them in your life. When you put your mind on these small pieces of bliss, they will grow. And it's a little bit slow, so you have to be very patient with it. But sit and soak in your own parasympathetic system. Oh my God, I have gotten out of the sympathetic system. Maybe it was only five minutes, but man, I did it. For that five minutes, I was the holy potato. I was soaking up the parasympathetic, the nervous system of healing 
and rejuvenation. I was soaking that in. Sometimes that doesn't even happen in sleep. In sleep, you can still be restless. You can still be worried. You can still have horrible dreams, right? Because we're stressed out so often. But yet, in seeking your parasympathetic through HRV resonance, through sitting very still, you're going to taste it. And you're going to actually soak it in. When we notice in our meditations, oh my God, I'm a little calm. I'm a little bit tranquil. I'm a little bit peaceful. And out of that peace and that freedom comes spontaneously a joy. This joy arises inside of you. This joy of the freedom that you are beginning to encounter, being free of the sympathetic system, being free of the noise of the world around you. I'm free. It was only five minutes. It was only 10 minutes. But damn it, I was free. Isn't that amazing? I can soak in that. So the peace, the calm, the tranquility, the joy spontaneously arising. Maybe you love the Kriya program of bliss and you're starting to notice the bliss in your spine, in your chakras, in your heart, through the cute baby meditation, through the angel exercise. You're starting to notice this bliss and you soak in that bliss. Oh my God. Do you even know what that's going to do to your life? Oh my God. Can we figure it out? Here's a fun medical fact. When you take selenium, it recycles your body's glutathione. So glutathione is your body's answer to anything which is an oxidant inside of your body. So Essentially, if you were a car, an oxidant would rust the car. So we got these things inside of the body. They're rusting our insides. They rust out the soft tissue, the eyes, the lungs, the brain first. That, th those are oxidants. What's your body's answer? Glutathione. When you take the essential mineral of selenium, well, now that recycles your body's glutathione. And the hilarious thing is, we don't actually know how often it recycles the glutathione. Like we can't calculate how many times is this actually being recycled. So the glutathione goes out, hunts for the oxidant, wipes it out, and now the glutathione is neutralized, right? But the selenium recycles it. And how many times is it recycling? We don't know. So selenium's kind of a little bit of a miracle, right? The same thing with bliss. What is it doing to your life? How much is it setting you free? How much is it recycling your parasympathetic? By soaking in these things, how much are you recycling the deep states of meditation which you have been cultivating so painstakingly? By soaking it in, you are automatically recycling all of that in your life over and over and over again. <laughs> and it gets really difficult to quantify how much it's actually doing in your life. And that's why at a certain point you reach a critical mass in these techniques, in what, what I'm telling to you, where it, it just, it makes a leap in your life. Uh, something opens up to you maybe not in meditation, maybe you're walking around and it opens up to you. Maybe you're sitting on the couch and it opens up to you. Maybe you're sitting in meditation or you're laying in bed, getting ready to sleep and the heart, the upper nervous system, the deep brain, it opens up to you. And we couldn't exactly quantify how that happened. We can track the steps, but how much is it being recycled? It's kind of difficult. I used to get these questions a lot. How long is this going to take exactly? <laughs> and it's really hard. It's really difficult to quantify some of these things. So soaking it up, becoming the holy potato, soaking in especially the very profound yogic skills. I call them the three essentials, the tranquil breath, the freeze response, the roll up of consciousness, soaking those into yourself. 
when you sit in deep meditation and you enjoy that deep state which you have discovered inside of yourself, you sit with it and you put your heart-like attention on it. I love this. This is great and I am enjoying it. I am soaking it in. That soaking it in, being the holy potato, it's not just a simile. It's not just a metaphor. It's real. You are actually soaking it into your subconscious. You're creating a pathway to find this deep state over and over and over again. Brother Dharmananda used to say to all the young meditators over and over again, okay, we're going to sit down in meditation. Remember that deep state, that last deep state. Can you remember it? Feel as if you are in that now. And now start your meditation with that. That's how he was teaching them to open up this pathway. And I am telling you, when you sit and you bathe yourself in the good feeling, in the good state which you have encountered inside of yourself, oh my God, I am sitting with the four proofs. Oh my God, I am sitting with peace and calm and tranquility and joy and bliss. Oh my goodness, I'm sitting with the tranquil breath and the freeze response and the roll-up of consciousness. And you just sit and bathe in that, in enjoyment. You are opening up through your psychology, through your subconscious, and even through the body. The pathway is opening and becoming easier for you so that you will come to this deep state and go deeper, faster and faster and faster. That's a very normal process of yoga, that all of the deep states, all of the beautiful things that you have been finding inside of yourself will start to arise faster and more often. And you will develop this yogic body where eventually you don't even have to try. You will sit down on the couch, watch a movie with your family and go, oh, I'm not trying, but I am in HRV resonance and I think the freeze response is starting to come over me. One wonderful yogi called me up. He goes, I'm watching a movie with my family. I'm in the tranquil breath, the freeze response, and the roll-up of consciousness, and I'm watching the movie with my family. I'm totally frozen. It's amazing. It turned a, a beautiful family event into also a very blissful event in my life. I was reading the other day a wonderful book by Om Swami Gayatri, the Gayatri his book on Gayatri Mantra. He said something really well, which I've heard other yogis say as well. There comes a point where you stop doing the meditation and the meditation starts doing you. And this is what he's talking about. You have been the holy potato. You have soaked in the parasympathetic system. You have soaked in the calm and the peace and even the joy and the bliss and the tranquil breath, and the freeze response, and the roll-up of consciousness, you've soaked them into yourself. So you sit sometimes to meditate, and you attempt to do the meditation, and boom, the meditation starts doing you. And you go, oh my God, what is this? That's it. You are the holy potato. And that's not to say that life will be a bed of roses. That's why we have Kriya therapy. And so I'm walking around in my life. A negative emotion arises. I feel that negative emotion wherever I feel it. And I just say mentally, Om, into that negative emotion, right? That's the Kriya therapy. My guru, Ashokji, he said, that's the real Kriya. I'm like, well, that's the real Kriya? He goes, yeah, well, it's the one you're doing all day, right? I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm doing it all day. So that's the real Kriya. I feel the negative emotion. Maybe I, I feel or sense the limiting decision about myself. You're not good enough. Blah, blah, blah. And I sense that and I ohm into it directly right there in the moment. Nobody has to know. I just ohm into it over and over and it shrinks. It shrinks. It shrinks. It, it dissolves. It's gone. And I get the learning. And it's the learning which will set you free. 
The learning can be subconscious, the learning can be conscious, but it's the learning that sets you free. So maybe you're doing that a few times and suddenly, boom, roll up of consciousness happens, you're walking through your day, you feel some of that peace and that calm and that bliss, that tranquility, which you have been soaking in, it returns to you in your day. And this is how the transformation of meditation happens, by becoming the holy potato. So I hope that you loved this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.